Hi guys and welcome to my review of the Chewy V7. The Chewy V7 is on sub $60 Android tablet and if you expect now to get one question answered that is the following, does it suck? Then I gotta say you, you are in the wrong place here. One that I maybe will answer though is how much tablet do you get for about $60? We will see in my full review. So let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at the design and build quality. Size comparison is always first. Here with a 5.5 inch fablet. As you can see, it still definitely is a lot bigger than something like that. But compared to, for example, an 8 inch, you can see it's definitely still a lot smaller. Just so you have that. So what about the design and build itself? Let's start off with the design. As you can see, the bezels are quite okay. Of course, they could maybe be a little bit smaller, but we are talking about a sub $60 tablet here after all. So I'm quite okay with that. As you can see here also, it's maybe not the thinnest one and it does bend a little bit, but for a plastic device, that's okay. The plastic itself actually feels quite okay. It has a nice smooth texture. It is quite grippy. It's not really slippery or something like that. So that has been managed quite okay. And it actually doesn't feel as cheap as I would have expected it to be. Let's take a look at the ports and buttons here. Here on the right side, we have the power button and the volume rocker, both quite nice and clicky. They could maybe click a little bit more, but the tactile feedback is actually quite okay. So no real problems here. Here we have the headphone jack, micro USB, on the left side there is nothing, and on the bottom there is just a microphone. You can open this flap here, which is a little bit odd, because it's six. and here we have the SIM card tray and also SD card tray. You can get that. I'm not quite so sure how long this nose will hold up, but let's try to put it back in. So, it works, and you have everything you want to. So in overall, it feels quite nice in the hand for something that costs less than $60. I gotta say, I expected something a lot worse. Here on the front, we can see the display that had a screen protector on it, but that one did diminish the resolution. I will talk about that later, so I took it off. But as you can see here, it does definitely attract a lot of fingerprints, but that was to be expected. So build quality is totally fine. Nothing groundbreaking, nothing amazing, but definitely quite okay for what you pay for. So let's take a look at the display. 7 inches, a resolution by 1024 by 600, so quite low res, and that's maybe also one of the most disappointing things here, because you just have to live with quite a bad resolution, and also it is already set to 100%, and I used it at 100% all the time, because anything less than 100 just made the display look quite dull. The white point is on a very cold level, just for a quick comparison with something that has a little bit of a nicer white. Just so you get a glimpse of feel of that, what you can expect. Let's get into that. As you can see here, this is something more realistic. So it's very cold and it's also not very bright. In a closed room, indoors, it gets the job done. But then again, the colors, they are a little bit washed out, but definitely not even that worse as I expected them to be. They definitely don't pop or anything like that. They aren't maybe the most accurate one, but it gets the job done. The black is actually okay. I had a little bit of light bleed, I think, here. And for the white, there was one thing. The more I used it on the left side here, I got a little bit of a yellow stain, but that is really not often that visible. So the display gets the job done is okay the resolution is my main gripe here because it's just quite low res it's also not very bright the viewing angles aren't really super stable as you can see they get quite dark quite soon but yeah that's to be expected i guess so i would say still okay still okay maybe i don't sound really impressed but i definitely don't sound really disappointed either. So let's check the sound here. So about the speaker sound, I gotta say the position actually did impress me in some way because it doesn't feel like it is coming from the back. In most cases I actually at first expected it to be somewhere on the front because it sounds quite front firing. Of course if you hold it normally like this, it did slightly mute the sound, it was a little bit more dull and not that clean. 
Other than that, the maximum volume was okay I would say it definitely wasn't maybe always good enough but in most cases okay not really a lot of bass the highs a little bit on the harsher side and the mids are okay so there's definitely not a great experience and especially for games it it's okay but yeah I'm not quite sure because every time I say things are okay I don't sound really impressed but yeah I don't know what else to say the sound for this price actually beats most phones it's definitely no great sound but just to get the sound experience totally fine so the performance now let's get into a browser and check something and here's the one thing that i gotta say as you can see here in the browser this actually looks very smooth and it is because once you are in an app and the app is fully loaded as you can see here the browsing is actually surprisingly really smooth i didn't expect that Though, there is one thing to mention, the loading times. So, the storage and the RAM are very slow. As you can see here, once fully loaded, it works out okay. There are definitely a few stutters and sometimes if you switch from app to app, it needs quite a while until it gets the app in the background fully loaded. So, that is definitely noticeable. As you can see here, the loading times are very slow. And I noticed that mostly when I install, for example, an app, this can take ages. I think something like SwiftKey needed more like more than 10 minutes to get installed. So the storage is really slow and the RAM seems to be very slow. But once it is finally loaded, as you can see here, and you need a little bit because it just has to cache quite, then as you can see here, this is okay. Google Plus, for example, wasn't really that good. It was quite choppy. Let's try to see that. As you can see, the loading times, that's maybe the most annoying thing on the long term. So if you don't switch apps too often, you can get away with it. And it definitely gets all the jobs done that you would expect from a disc, from maybe a tablet. But not in a maybe great experienced way, but it gets a job. As you can see here, it just needs to cache a lot once it gets the time. So if you switch apps all the time, you will notice this way more often. And multitasking is the same with just one gigabyte of RAM. It can become a burden because it just needs like 10, 20 seconds every time to get adjusted to where it actually is. That's a little bit of a bummer. That's, I think, mostly because of the slow RAM. Let's check the gaming performance. And I actually didn't, I wasn't able to install that many apps because I'm just limited here with the storage and I don't have an SD card ready right now. But at least for this game, I gotta say, performance was surprisingly good. Of course, low res and maybe not the most details. And as you can see here, the display is definitely not the brightest one and the glare is quite extreme. So let's see what we've got. Start a game. And I'll actually let the sound on just for you to hear how it is in games. Because I don't think it's bad. It's a little bit on the flat side and harsher, but okay, let's see the gaming performance now. So, as you can see, if there's a lot going on on the screen, it has a little bit of trouble. But once I'm now alone on the screen, as you can see, this looks really nice and smooth. Not really any frame drops. Quite okay, definitely playable for something like a casual gamer, totally fine. I think that's it. Let's get out of here. And maybe you noticed one thing, at maximum volume the speaker starts to distort quite often, so that's a little bit of a bummer. So now about the battery life. It takes about two to two and a half hours to fully charge, it depends a little bit on what charger you used. But the battery life was very, very disappointing and I think that's at least from my standpoint the biggest issue here because you can live with a display that isn't so great you can live with a sound that isn't so great but if you can't use it for long as you can see here over the course of two hours and 90 so this was just fully using it one hour and 38 i got a few left so i would have maybe gotten it to two hours here we have eight hours one hour 40 once again and here 22 hours and I got 125. I gotta say one thing that is really terrible on this device and that is the standby drain. Over the course of 20 hours, I lost 30%. 
So if you just leave it on the table for maybe like two days and use it just a little bit, it will be already dead. And that is what happened a lot of times to me because that battery is really, really bad. In terms of battery life, I get that it uses a lot of battery because I used it at 100% all the time. So you can maybe get it to two, two and a half, maybe even three hours, but I expect something like over the course of one day, two hours to be more the average, which is definitely quite disappointing. I can get the software out of the way quite fast because we are using a pretty much absolutely stock Android. Here it just looks a little bit different because of the tablet layout. But we get Android 5.1.1, so pretty much the newest version if you aren't on a Nexus. And it is pretty much bare bone, as you can see here. Not really any bloat installed. There were a few Chinese apps, but we have the Play Store. I could uninstall all the Chinese apps, at least the one I did know that I don't need. And that is okay, quite clean. Everything is like you would expect it from stock Android. We also get the tray, everything is there. So that's it, I will go to the recap now. It's time for the recap now and I gotta make one fear clear right from the start. This is a sub $60 tablet, so we will have to evaluate things just differently. You can just have the same expectations as you have for a mid-range or premium tablet. So just keep that always in mind if I talk maybe good about some of the aspects here. So first of all, design and build quality. I gotta say it doesn't feel bad. It feels totally okay for $60 quite robust, solid, it does flex a little bit, but other than that, buttons are okay, ports placement is okay, everything else is okay, no real problems, nothing premium, but definitely not cheap. The display, yes, maybe a little bit disappointing because of the low resolution, I would have just wished for at least 1200 by 800 or something like that, but we have to lower our standards here. Other than that, it is bright enough indoors, the colors are okay, slightly washed out, young angles are maybe impressive, but totally fine. So I gotta say, white is a little bit on the colder side, the black is okay, not really any light bleed. So once again, everything is okay, and what you would expect from a $60 tablet, maybe even slightly more. Definitely, you get a lot better displays in the $100, $150, or maybe $200 region. But for $60, and since I don't have much comparison here, I gotta say the display is totally acceptable, workable. Yes, gets the job done. Sound? actually slightly better maybe because actually loud enough in most cases watching a youtube video or a little bit of music or so did get the job done if you hold it like this you will muffle the sound a little bit also not really any bass mids are okay highs are a little bit on the harsher side and it does distort on higher volumes but once again you can use it for all you need to the experience maybe isn't great but at least it's there in terms of performance it's a little bit of a hit and miss because the storage is slow the ram is slow and apps just load slow everything you install is quite slow but once you are past that point and accept that you that can't really multitask a lot with that device not just because of the one gigabyte because of the slow one gigabyte of ram apps just need the time to load but once this loading time is finished and you are within the app everything is properly settled in for example the browser then actually is really smooth which is nice you can use all the apps in a quite okay way but don't expect to jump from app to app because then you will get quite a laggy janky and sluggish experience if you are mostly in one app at a time Give it a little bit of time to adjust, then it's actually totally workable and especially if you just need it for basic tasks like browsing the web, checking your emails and so on, you can do all this just fine. Not with the best experience, but with for $60 quite okay experience. Gaming performance for the few games that I tried was okay, definitely, but I don't think this is something more like for something like a casual gamer. The battery life though was the very disappointing thing because a battery charge needs about two, slightly over two hours and that's pretty much also just the battery life that you get. Expect about two hours over the course of one day. If you expect it to use it for more or one or two days on a charge, you won't really get much more than one hour of screen on time. So I would say one and a half to maybe closer to two hours in normal use. Everything up to that over that is actually a bonus. If you lower the brightness, you can get maybe three hours. I've, I've seen those results on the internet, but I didn't like the display with anything lower than 100% because it just seemed too dull. 
software totally fine android 5.5 5.1.1 uh, didn't really have too much issues sometimes things crashed it was a little bit janky and buggy there were also some issues that when i watched a youtube video for a longer period of time i just got on green screen and i had to restart the video but it was mostly fine so like I said, I won't answer the question if it sucks, but I will tell you what you get for $60. For $60, if you only want the basic tasks in an acceptable way, this is totally fine. It gets the job done, you can do everything, but just don't expect too much of it. I haven't reviewed something like the tablet from Amazon yet for about 50, 60 bucks, so I can't complain it, I mean, compare it at all with that. But for $60, the basic tasks get actual, actually absolutely fine. But I think if you maybe can save up maybe double or maybe three times the money, you get a lot more value. For example, with a little bit of luck, maybe now on Black Friday or so, you can get the Lenovo S7 that costs usually normally at about $200, but I got mine for $150. So let's see it like maybe double the price because I paid $60 for this, but there is also taxes and shipping support so i had to pay additional 20. and one disclaimer that i forgot to tell yet i got this device from gearbest.com so check out their site as well also their youtube channel i got it for free to review so i didn't want to mention it earlier so you wouldn't think i was biased in some way i think i was not but that's why i didn't tell you so if you now think of all that i said before is in a biased way because I got it for free, then at least I have personally to say I have to disappoint you. But I wanna also mention one thing. If you want to see more reviews like these from devices that I can get from Gearbest, then leave me a like because only that way I can get more devices like these. It was very nice to see how much of a experience you can get from a $60 tablet. And I think if you are in a country where you just don't earn that much of money and you don't really need a tablet that often and don't have any demanding tasks and you want just the basic stuff to get done and you really don't want to spend a lot of money then this tablet gets the job done i can't really say if any tablets in this price range deliver a better performance or not because this is the first one i've tried so far but i gotta say i expected actually something a lot worse i saw a few of those cheap tablet reviews also on the internet but i didn't make it through the one minute mark because they only checked all the bad stuff just were focusing off it of it sucks and i can just say it doesn't suck the experience isn't great and if you spend maybe like double the money because if we consider this to be 60 dollars plus the 20 that i paid it's already about 80 and then double the money you get something quite nice a lot better with maybe like 10 times the experience, it's hard to measure that, but it is definitely a way better experience. I've dragged this a long way, way longer than I usually do for my recap and final words, but I just wanted to make things clear. Not bad, but also not great. And with the right expectations, you get quite an okay bang for your buck. But like I said, don't expect too much. That's it for my review of the Chewy We 7. I gotta see you next time and if you have anything to say, leave it in the comments if you have any questions as well. If you liked it, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Okay, until next time, bye.